TGTV and more specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Watch Talk. No, I haven't lost the plot. This, in case you hadn't known from my social media, and you might actually just be new to this channel, this is my dog. His name is Crisps. Yes, Crisps. Not Chris, Crisps. And he is of absolutely no use to this video whatsoever, but I thought I'd bring him anyway, because he seems to be more popular than me. Hello from Crisps. Hello, mate. You're very sleepy, aren't you? Yesterday, he ran around my apartment, broke out of his pen, and ate half a bar of soap, and then did a poo everywhere, <laughs> and then threw up. So he's caused absolute carnage, and he's feeling a little bit sorry for himself. But he's okay, ladies and gentlemen, so that's the main thing. Anyway, bye from Crisps. <laughs> I'm just gonna... Can you say bye to the viewers? Crisps? No. Okay, bye then, mate. Get yourself back in here, little monkey. <laughs> I do apologise for that. You okay in there? Yeah, he's fine. So, today we're not here to talk about my dog, very sadly, because I happily talk for hours about him. We're here to talk about the Tudor P01, the latest addition to my collection. I picked up the watch the other day from uh, Watches of Switzerland. It's actually probably about two weeks ago. Literally the first one in the country, so big shout out to them for that. Anyway, without further ado then, no more dogs, no more animals. Let's get unboxing them. We have the watch in here. First things first, cardboard shield off. We can just throw that away. So the box is a nice uh, black variety. I think some of the latest Tudors come in this uh, black box, black outer box, shall we say. In here then, we have kind of a satin black inner box. This is where it starts to get a little bit more fancy. Let's get rid of all this cardboard, eh? Go away. You as well. So here we go. This is the outer box. And very cool. On the underside there, it's kind of this felt material. And it says, a Tudor SA Geneve. Uh, well, Montra Tudor SA Geneva, which is what they actually used to say on the back of the old Rolex manufactured Tudor diving watches for the Navy back in the 70s. More on that in a second. Anyway, inside then, da -da 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 -da, we've got the watch itself. Now, what you'll notice off the bat, this watch doesn't actually come with any spare straps. It's got this little compartment here that all the Tudor boxes have. I don't actually know what that's for. It seems to be empty. Anyway, that's kind of irrelevant, but just something I picked up on. All the other Tudors, like the Black Bay, which I've actually got here. This is the first Black Bay they released. We'll get onto this one in a second. We'll do some comparisons. That came with a spare strap. Very nice value. However, let's get this thing out. For this, I'm going to take off this piece of junk. Who knows what that is? Under here, then. All we've got, pretty much, is just a warranty card under there, and then the swing tag as well. Not hugely exciting. So first things first then, let's cover some basics on the Tudor P01. This is part of their Black Bay lineup. As I just said, get back in the shop. This was the first Black Bay they did, and this was kind of the resurgence of Tudor since they made a kind of a military watches in the 70s for the Navy. We've got one here actually. We'll get onto that as well, ladies and gents. So this is part of the Black Bay line, and that has seen kind of a huge increase over the past few years. They did the red Black Bay ETA, the black, Black Bay ETA, the blue Black Bay ETA starting to get a mouthful, and then they revised the movement into the MT5, whatever it is, the in-house Tudor movement. They did the Bronze Bay, they did a Harrods version, um, they've done a 36 mil version, they've done a 41 mil version, they've done a steel bezeled one, um, they've released a Black Bay Dark as well, which is a, a DLC or P PVD coated kind of uh, bracelet version. They've done a lot of them, basically. They've released a load of special editions as well. They've done one for the special protection unit in the UK. It's got a cool little rose on the dial. They've done uh, some sort of Emirati one, uh, Qatari for the Royals or something or other like that. Basically one of these, but with um, some Arabic on the dial, I believe. Very rare watch. Anyway, there's a lot of Black Bays knocking around. And this is the latest in a long lineup. Some more basics then, it is in a 42 millimeter case. It's made of steel. It just features the date and time. So it's a very simple movement. There's no chronograph, there's nothing exciting there. It is on this leather strap. You'll be already noticing that it looks a little bit different to a normal watch. We're gonna get onto that. It's on this leather strap that's actually lined with rubber as well on the back of it. Hopefully we've got some close-ups there. It's got a solid case back with the kind of Tudor Montre SA engravings on there. I've actually left a stick on there. You'll probably be telling me off for that. And it's on this deployant clasp as well, which has kind of got this nifty uh, fold up set up on there. I believe made of steel or titanium, I can't really tell, but it's a rather nice brush finish. Everything works with a very reassuring click. I'm going to put it on the wrist actually whilst I'm talking to you. It also features a little kind of dome sapphire on the front there. Kind of a bit of a historic feature as well, like the watches of old. So then, why 
and how did it come about looking like this. You'll also notice that it's got this kind of this link before the strap attaches to it with a 20 millimeter lug width. The end links, ordinarily on a watch like this, the leather strap would go straight into the case, but this has got an end link, much like you'd see on a normal watch with a bracelet, but then goes into this kind of leather cum rubber strap, which is a very odd design. And these kind of hoods on either end of the dial here at the kind of 12 o'clock and six o'clock marker serve a very valid purpose, or sort of, one of them does anyway, which we will get onto. So this watch was actually really controversial. It was released at the last Basel World to a huge fanfare from Tudor. Tudor were going absolutely hell for leather on this watch, promoting this watch, talking about it, hyping it up, hyping, 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 and then this dropped. And it wasn't met with uh, universal acclaim, shall we say. The Black Bay, third time this thing's come out, this one, when this dropped, it was universally loved, I believe. Pretty much everyone loved it and they were pretty excited about it. The only complaint was that it was possibly slightly too big. But that was about it. This, however, when it came out, people were not sure. They had no idea what to think of it. There was a lot of kind of mocking on the internet. There was memes. There was carnage when it came out. I loved it when it first came out. I'm not just saying that, but I genuinely... And Tudor aren't paying me, by the way. I mention this in every single video. Tudor don't pay me. They should, because I bang on about them and people buy the watches off the back of these videos. But they don't. So if you work for Tudor and you want to pay me, by all means, carry on. I'm still going to be honest about them, but... But yeah, essentially, this was not universally loved. So then, why does it look so weird? What's going on with that then? This was actually based on a 60s prototype, named the Commando Project by Tudor. This was kind of much confined to the archives and kind of a, more of an R&D exercise for the American Navy back in the 60s. Tudor came up with a patent, I think Rolex actually patented it, with this bezel locking design. And this is pretty much what gives the watch its look and its character, this bezel locking design on the top here. I'm, I'm gonna do some close-ups and show you exactly how it works in a second. But effectively, in the Navy, in the 60s, Tudor came up with a design to lock the bezel in place. Apparently in kind of uh, naval things, having a bezel that kind of doesn't move around when you're, I don't know, I guess, trying to time your oxygen, stuff like that under the sea, God knows. Whatever it is, is, apparently it's incredibly unhelpful if your bezel when you're timing something gets knocked and you uh, run out of there. Apparently that's not a good thing if you are deep sea diving, who knew? So Tudor came up with this idea. They thought, how are we gonna lock the bezel? Let's make a little kind of folding flap hood which you can flip back, turn the bezel and then lock it back down in place. Very cool design, but that design never actually saw the light of day. I believe they only made one prototype watch. That watch actually made it to Baselworld with the release of this watch. That was kind of Tudor's way of saying, we haven't just made this up, this was actually a thing in the 60s. Now, there was some controversy on top of that about whether or not Tudor had actually made up the fact that it was a prototype. There are some people out there that basically say that that prototype wasn't even a thing. It's just been fudged by Tudor to justify putting this out. I don't know whether that's true or not. I wasn't around in the 60s and certainly I wasn't in the Tudor Research and Development Department in wherever it was, uh, Rolex somewhere. So I can't verify that. But what I would say it's a very cool story and I like the kind of uh, the history behind it all. Tudor obviously carried on then making watches for the Navy in the 70s with their kind of snowflake submariner. It was actually produced by Rolex and had some Rolex demarcations on the back. And that's where this thing comes in. Totally different. Totally different to this. And this thing's an absolute monster in comparison. If you compare the, the size, if you compare the size of those two together, this thing's an absolute dwarf by it. But this was effectively Rolex case, Rolex crown actually as well on there, Rolex case back, but I think with a slightly cheaper movement, the Tudor actually made for the French Navy. Very cool watches and very few of those about. Love, love, love that. And it's got the snowflake hands. Same snowflake hands as now features in this. Talking of hands then, we're flip-flopping back to the prototype. The prototype didn't actually have snowflake hands on it. Bizarrely, it had, I believe, like kind of uh, normal lollipop style hands. So Tudor kind of just thought, do you know what, just shove the snowflake hands on it, it's more historic, whatever, whatever. Other historic nods on this watch, there's a little line of red text. Historically, that doesn't actually feature any Tudor watches, red text, that's usually associated with Rolex and the single red sea dwellers. Again, Tudor just thought that probably looked cool, nicked it, stuck it on this. The watches do vary slightly, and this is actually kind of reminiscent of the deep sea diving kind of project that Rolex did and strapped to the outside of a submarine many, many moons ago. Many of you will see that watch. It's extraordinarily ugly, and it sits in a museum somewhere, and it's completely unwearable. So this is, this is slightly more bearable than that. The other thing to bear in mind with this watch is actually very unusual. The crown is actually 
at four o'clock, not at three o'clock where it usually is. It kind of sits around there and I wear it on the wrong wrist, which you'll already be telling me off for. But yeah, <laughs> to basically just change the time, it's almost impossible on this. I have to take the watch off, but I have to do that most watches anyway. They put it in the four o'clock position, presumably to mean that it's less obstructions when you are uh, running around in wetsuits or something rather. I don't know, but that's also protected by a crown guard as well. So very, very secure and there's no way that you're ever gonna knock that or, or get it caught or anything. Quite a nice little uh, design thing there as well. The dial on the watch as well is not a glossy black, it's kind of a matte black with quite a nice texture to it, very, very cool. And the text that is printed on there, it's kind of got a raised finish as well. My camera's nowhere near good enough to pick up the kind of macro shots of that, but it's raised text, which is very nice on top of the dial. The loom on the dial as well is kind of uh, globbed on there as well. There's no markers around the outside, white gold markers like there are on Rolex. It's literally just globbed straight onto the dial. I don't think globbed is the uh, technical term for the way that the dials are produced, but Hey, we're going with Glob today. Other things to note then, it's about two or 300 meters water resistant. If that's a thing, if any of you even get past swimming with it, I know I certainly don't. And if I wanted to go diving, I'd probably wear a Seiko or something like that. It's a little bit cheaper. So if you're watching this and thinking, I quite like one of those, but I don't really want to pay for it. BOTB actually giving one of these away in their watch competition. It's part of their lifestyle competition. There's gadgets, there's watches, there's all sorts of stuff. If you are into your watches, go and check it out because it's a huge array. Not just this one, because some of you will be looking at this and thinking, that's a pretty ugly watch. And Hey, you might be right. There are loads of watches on there. There's Rolexes, there's Amigas, there's Tudors, there's all sorts of stuff on this. Make sure you go and check that out. Tickets start at just 15p. You can enter from anywhere in the world. You've got to be 16 or over to enter. It is very, very simple. The link will be below anyway. Hit the special link and it'll take you straight through, probably to this watch and a load of other cool ones. So, and as I threaten with every single watch video, if you win a watch, you may well get me turning up at your door to hand it over to you. So. Good and bad news, basically. So good luck with that. As I say, I'll leave the links below and I'll probably remind you at the end of the video to go and get the pot with that. Now, where was I? I was talking about, um, I was boring on about the history of Tudor and how this thing came about, uh, 60s prototype, Tudor's history of making Navy watches, and the Rolex connection, dial, case, functions, features, Power reserve, I don't really know. It's the Tudor in-house movement anyway. They've updated the movement. I wear them for like a day at a time. They don't get a full charge pretty much and they all die within by the time I don't wear them again anyway. Speaking of power reserve, then I want to clear something up very, very quickly. Many of you ask, what do I do? Do I put my watches on a winder? What earth am I playing at? Where do I put them all? The reality is most of them just sit in a vault. I'll only have one or two on me at a time. I've literally got a couple of these out of my vault, which isn't in my house. It's in a bank or equivalent. I'd only have a couple out at a time anyway because it just makes no sense to have a pile of them just sat around. So I don't have a huge watch winder full of watches spinning around on the wall somewhere, which would be lovely, but very noisy and very uneconomical. I actually have one watch winder for one watch. Actually, I got this quite recently. Oh, there's a funky. This is from a company, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll already see it because I'm a huge fan of their work. This is from a company called Heretier, and it's a French brand, so I've probably said that wrong. Um, but basically they make these very, very high quality leather bound watch winders, kind of almost um, handmade bespoke items. And on the back there you've got a solid metal plate, I mean I wish you could feel it, it's so, so heavy. There's a solid metal plate on the back there anyway. And that actually says TGE, so I don't know if you can pick that up, but that is custom made and they allow the customers to literally engrave whatever they want on there. There's a choice of different colours, really, really cool. I'll leave the link to this below by the way anyway. Really nice. It's actually Bluetooth controlled and tuned in with manufacturers such as Patek Philippe to wind it in the most optimum way as recommended by the manufacturer. So there's an app on your phone that you can, it's all very nerdy and I really, really enjoy it. Um, there's probably a side to me I haven't put online because it's even more boring than the usual drivel I put out. But anyway, yeah, they've got numerous manufacturers on there and it's all kind of tuned in specifically as per the manufacturer. So very, very cool. And there's also like, there's loads of cool nerdy features on this thing. So even this is patented to prevent bracelet stretch. So it actually kind of uh, holds the strap from various different angles and it's unlike any other watch winder so it even prevents bracelet wear. Very, very cool. Anyway, that's probably way more detail than any of you wanted to know about my watch winder, but I've had some questions. So that's my watch winder and it's green, so it's cash. Ugh! I'll leave the website below anyway if you want to go and check them out. Most of you want to be talking about residuals right now. You want to be talking about the price of the watch. You want to be talking about how many they made. Is it a good investment? Blah, 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 blah. This watch was £2,950, I believe. That is the retail price. That is what I paid. Is there a premium on them? Uh, I haven't even looked, to be honest with you. I've not looked. Uh, I believe that early watches there probably will be, as there are with most kind of uh, uh, relatively sought after kind of uh, steel-based sports models. Will that premium last? I wouldn't have thought so. 
Um, will they always be 2,900? Probably not. Tudor will probably put their prices up at least once or twice a year now, between five and 10%, um, in line with what Rolex do to their prices. Um, so I wouldn't imagine they'll be sub three grand for long. That said, I'm not telling you to go and buy one of these watches because it's gonna make you rich. Very unlikely to be the case. There are a few watches that you can buy at list price if you get one, and they will make you quite rich. This one is not one of them. This is a watch I bought because I like, not a watch I bought to make money on. I don't suspect if I ever get bored of this in the future, I'm gonna make a penny on it. I'll probably just sell it for what I bought it for, maybe a tad less. So for those out there looking at watches and thinking, oh, TG's just buy stuff to make money on, not every single time. Sometimes I just buy stuff because I like it and there's a bit more satisfaction sometimes than that. This was a passion watch, really. I just thought it was cool. Um, it doesn't represent bad value for money, I don't think. You get an in-house movement, you get a very kind of novel design. Um, you get basically Rolex level of manufacturing and it's half the price, no, less than half the price of a Submariner. What's the standard steel Submariner with date these days? on the kind of gray market, nine grand maybe? And retails what, six or seven? So yeah, it's literally less than half the price of a Submariner. And it's just quite cool. I really rate Judah for kind of going outside the box on this and kind of thinking, I'm not just gonna make another Submariner, I'm gonna make something that's a little bit edgy, a little bit different. In an, air, in an era where kind of most manufacturers are just churning out the same stuff with slight tweaks, Rolex. And Amiga, to be fair, most of the manufacturers just tweaking existing designs slightly Tudor have gone outside the box and made something that isn't actually really for everyone. It's a bit Marmite and that's why I think it's quite cool. It's totally unapologetic and it stays true to kind of Tudor's um, brand identity to be fair and kind of their, their history as well. It's a bit quirky and it's unlike anything I've got in my collection. I mean, everything else ends up looking a bit samey. I've got here, I've got here a 50th Sea Dweller as well. Um, and you'll see the size difference actually. This 50th Sea Dweller kind of dwarfs the uh, Black Bear a little bit there, but everything just looks a little bit samey. You know, even that, they all look kind of like evolutions of one another. But this thing, it just kind of sits there just like, what? I think it's great. Going on to the size thing then, it does wear more like my 50th Sea Dweller here. This is a Mark 1 dial, for anyone that cares. I bought this back in 2017. The video is actually on my channel somewhere. I think it's got about 200,000 views now. But it does wear about the same as the 43mm Sea Dweller. It's a big old chunky boy. The Sea Dweller probably still weighs more because of the bracelet. Um, but yeah, I love it. They've both actually got red text on there as well. Both kind of milking some history. But what you will see is actually the Tudor case is actually a lot bigger as well. So dimensions wise, but profile wise, they are literally about the same. I appreciate you probably can't really see from there, but they're both big old boys. For those that are concerned then on the bracelet, what it kind of feels like if you've got skinny wrists, that does, I've got quite skinny wrists, but you can see it does actually fit on there quite nicely. The end links don't protrude out at all. It all just fits way better than I thought it would. I was pleasantly surprised when I picked up this watch. Very, very pleasantly surprised indeed. It fits very nicely. And I think it looks quite cool with most things really. Not sure about it with a kind of very formal suit and a dinner jacket, but certainly in terms of wearing a, a t-shirt and tracksuit buttons, which is all I seem to wear these days, it does work very well. Another thing I really want to get onto, off the back of me talking about my watches and putting them in vaults and all sorts of stuff, people ask me non-stop about watch insurance. I actually insure my watches with a bunch called First Point. I've mentioned First Point actually, I think in my video before this, my watch talk video before this, and I've mentioned them in relation to my cars as well. So they predominantly do supercar insurance. So supercar people, if you are listening, First point is where I insure my cars because I get so many car insurance questions you would not believe. I'll leave their contact details below anyway, but in terms of the watches, I think the best way to do it in terms of insuring watches is getting a content policy for your house and then tacking the watches into that with first point. It's often less economically viable, should we say, to just get a single watch on one policy. The best way to do it, I think, is insure your contents and then get your watches put into the contents insurance and kind of tack it on as a standalone. There will be various requirements and First Point will tell you about that and what various insurers will need. And say hello from me. If you do give them a call, say hello from TG and um, yeah, they'll probably, they'll probably start hating me if you keep mentioning them and breaking their phone lines. But yeah, very important you get your watches insured because if you live in London or any major city in the UK, people have a habit of wanting to steal them. That's actually one thing I would say about this and I'm probably publicising it a little bit now. But this isn't a watch that's particularly flashy. You can stroll down the street looking a bit scruffy and I don't think anyone's going to put a knife to your face for it. Could be wrong, and I'm probably wrong now I'm saying that. I'm probably gonna get stabbed for this. Hopefully not. But it's just not that flashy. I feel like something like this, that's spotted a mile off. You come out of a nightclub in the evening, someone's gonna have that off you if you're pretty unlucky, but that's red rag to a ball. This, however, 
Not so much though. Doesn't look that flashy. Could be some sort of, I don't know, military vibe worth a couple hundred quid. Which sounds bad, but something I actually quite like. Sometimes I don't actually really want to be wearing something that looks hugely flashy and uh, tempting people to knife me. So quite a cool aspect. Anyway, I think that's about it. I said my piece on this watch. Um, it's, it's joined the collection. It's in the pot. It's going to be in my videos. I'm going to be wearing it all the time. So a lot of you did actually spot it on my Instagram stories a little while ago. So shout out to those people. But I've stopped wearing it because I wanted to put this video out and talk about it first on a monetized platform before I started milking it on Instagram. So yeah, here it is. I've got a Tudor P01 and I love it. Big shout out to BOTB anyway. If you want to win one of these or any other one of about a million other watches, go and hit the links below. Check them out. If you want to get insured, check out First Point. If you want to watch Finder, Heretier, the links are below. I think that's it from me. I would also, I hope you like my chair, everyone. Some of you have spotted it in my Instagram stories here in my flat, so I thought I'd get them involved as well. So uh, there we go. And if you're just here for supercars, I'm sorry you had to sit through that, although you probably haven't reached this point. If you're just here for supercars, the next video will be a supercar video. I do apologise. There's going to be one watch talk video per month, and I do welcome your suggestions below in the comments what you want me to review next. And do you want me to get watch people on the channel? Are there watch YouTube channels you want me to collab with? Are there people you want on to watch talk to talk through their collections? Because that's something I'm going to start doing. Ideas below anyway. Give me some food for thought. Get in the pot. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao for now. Bye.